let's crack on. Um, so um, you're quite spread out, but we put some Mars bars out near the front of the room. They don't extend all the way back, and some of you are quite far away. Um, but uh, we might use that as a, we're using that as an, an analogy in this session. So this talk is, uh, is your API deserves more respect, make it a product. It's about how we think about the APIs that we offer and talk about in our organizations, the, the language we use and the approach we take to selling them and marketing them. It kind of affects the whole business. So um, my name's Andrew Seward. I'm the technical product manager for Ascendex. We are sponsoring the event. We've got a stand upstairs. Um, and um, we do SMS services for uh, businesses. So if you want to get your software to send text messages, we're good at that, and voice messages and all sorts of other stuff too. So um, that's my role there. So today what we're going to cover is a uh, brief introduction, but then we'll, um, we're going to talk about how the, your API is a product, um, why that matters, it's important, why it's important to make that distinction, and why, um, uh, how you go about treating your API as a product, and uh, if we've got time, it's quite short, uh, it's quite a short time slot, but if we've got time, we'll talk about how you get the rest of your company on board. It's quite an easy sell to tell all of you to you know, treat your API as a product, but how do you change how your organization thinks about that? And then a few Q bit of Q&A if we've got time to. Okay, this is Ascendex. We do, uh, we're based in Nottingham in the UK, we do, uh, and we have also have offices in Barcelona, Melbourne, um, in... Um, uh, Madrid and, uh, and Vienna and lots of other places. So we, we, uh, it's a great place to work. It's a great place to be a developer. If you're looking for work as a developer, it's a very nice place to do. We do test-driven development and things like that. I've been asked to mention that anyway. We're hiring. You go to the website, there's jobs on there. So anyway, your API is a product. And how many people here have APIs, uh, provide APIs as a company? Um, or, rep or work with a company to provide their APIs. Quite a few of you, quite a few hands going up. Um, okay, I'm gonna do, there's going to be a bit of an exercise soon, so I need to know who those people are. Um, so, but if you look at that, if, um, if you look at the Mars bars that we put out, we put some Mars bars out, and I'm using it as a sort of analogy for this. So, we've got Mars bars here. So, um, this Mars bar is a product. Like, no one will dispute this. There's never, no one had to stand up on a stage and say, hey, your chocolate bar's a product. Everybody got it. It's a product, clearly a product. And, uh, and a, lot of the things, a lot of the things that make it a product are also true of APIs. It's got, it's got features. So a feature of the Mars bar is it tastes very nice and it makes you feel good. If you're feeling a bit low, then you eat a Mars bar, sugar goes into your body, you feel good. So uh, it's got quirks. Like, I don't know, I'm not sure what the quirks would be. Fondant, I'm not sure. Uh, bugs, hopefully not. We just bought these. Uh, but, you know, your API might have those. Things that are great about it, things that, things that really work really well. Uh, things that suck. Uh, you know, it, Mars bar makes you, uh, makes you fat if you eat loads of them. And heart disease and diabetes, there's all, so, all sorts of things that suck about a Mars bar. But, and there's things that suck about your API that people don't like. And there's customer journeys. So the customer journey with the Mars bar is um, I'm walking along and I feel a bit hungry, need a little snack to get me over to dinner. I go into the shop, I see the Mars bar on the shelf, I buy it. Your API has this, a similar customer journey there. They're looking, they've got a problem to solve. They come to your website, they see that it, it might well solve the problem. They sign up, they go through the sign up process. Uh, they maybe do a free trial or something like that. They have a go, code it in, hey, it does the job and then they use it. That's the, it's got a customer journey just the same. Uh, it's got customers, loyal customers. You've got loyal Mars bar customers. You've got loyal API customers. It's got packaging. Your API's packaging might be the developer site. It might be, it's the brochure site for your website, for your, for your, um, for your service. And this has a wrapper. It's got instructions. It's got people who love it and people who don't love it. These are all aspects of a product and the API has that same thing. This is actually a pretty easy sell to you guys, I, I, I should imagine. Um, but the, thing, the important thing to remember is that your users, they're not looking for an API. They are, they're not just into APIs, so they want to play with it. They, well, some of them are. But you're, the people who are coming to you and you want to sell, sell your service to them, they, are, they, they have a problem they need to solve. They want a product that solves their problem. In Ascendex's case, 
they have a piece of information on their in their software that they need to get out to lots of customers. Um, and um, so, so uh, in the case of the Mars bar, they are solving the problem of of being hungry or feeling a bit low, I guess. <laughs> but I don't know. Um, so, so yeah, they have a problem. Uh, they want a product that solves their problem. And if you're not thinking about your API as a product, you're thinking about it as a technical concept, or not thinking about it at all, which is even worse. Uh, then you might, there's, there's a, that's an easy po point to miss, and uh, there's quite a few others that are also quite easy to miss. So I've got a little exercise here. How do we talk about our APIs? Okay, can you, the guys who, who uh, work for companies or work uh, on APIs, can you stick your hands up again? All right, that's quite a lot of you. Those of you that don't, keep your hands up, hands up, keep the hands up. Those of you who don't, can you go over to one of those people, keep those hands up. And, and I want you to talk to them. So look around you, pair up with someone who's got an API, ideally one you don't already know about, maybe make sure you don't work for the same company. Can you, can you like go up to each other and talk about it? <laughs> Come on, legs, on our feet, energy. So just, I'm gonna give you three minutes, just gonna talk, I want you, what I want you to do is explain your API to the other person. Hey, you guys, you too. Do you two want to talk to each other? Do you guys? This guy has an API. Oh, you too? Let's match make, let's do it. Come here, come here. Come and sit here. Excuse me. Oh, you're working, he's working. Oh, let's not disturb him. Oh, late. Let's sit, come here. <laughs> yeah, we're Jade. Uh, would you like to, could you explain to this lady as well? So she, so oh. so there he's talking about, he's explaining the, the API that these gentlemen have to people who don't know about it. Okay, that's enough of that. Quite enough of that what that, that I just asked you to do. All right. Okay. Was, okay, so we've all we've all learnt, we should all have learned something about an, an API that's somewhere around us that someone's someone's working on in our vicinity. So did any of you mention any of these things? Rest, did anyone say rest, use the word rest? How oh, it's restful. And how great it works with this programming language over here. .NET, PHP, Node, Scala. Uh, how it's secured, API keys, OAuth. So that's a, that's, um, that's a good exercise to, to get you to think about when, you, when you're introducing the concept of an API, whether it to be a technical person or a non-technical person, what's the language we use when we talk about it? So, um, so this, is, this is kind of comes on to this point. Why don't we already treat APIs as products? So um, it's, no one ever had to say, I mentioned this earlier, but no one ever had to, no one at the Mars, no one at the Mars organization ever had to say, hey guys, we should be treating this chocolate bar as a product. Everybody got it. You said they put the chocolate bars on the table, we're selling this, they're like, that's a product, bang, out it goes. They got their marketing strategy, they got their language down, they know how to talk about it, they know how to sell it. But with, the, with an API, 
It's not the same. You can't just chuck it on the desk and say, sell that, guys. Get it, go out there, go do it. It's a little bit more complicated because for a few reasons. First of all, APIs, APIs as products haven't really been around that long. Like, like the, 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 modern, the modern concept of an API as a product didn't exist before the year 2000. It, uh, certainly as a technical concept, it definitely existed. But as a product, it didn't exist. The, the, probably the earliest example would be the Salesforce API, which came out in February 2000, and the eBay API, which came out in November 2000. That wasn't that long ago. I can remember what I was doing that year, that day, pretty clearly. You know, it's just an idiot teenager. So um, that wasn't that long ago. They haven't been around. They haven't permeated the public consciousness um, as uh, as other things might. That's quite reasonable. If I go to tell, tell my dad, hey. I'm working at a Sendex, I'm product manager for an API. He's like, what? He benefits from APIs. He goes to the supermarket, there's, there's stock on all the shelves. His phone is able to receive email. He's able to forward me the most inane emails I've ever seen in my life. He's able to do that because of APIs. Like All of that is available because of APIs. He uses Netflix and he clicks the button, he doesn't know an API is behind it, but he benefits from it. So we're all benefiting from it, but I haven't permeated the public consciousness in the same way. You can't just say there's an API and they get it. There's another problem. If we compare it to the Mars bar, here's the Mars bar. You can see it. Have you got your Mars bars? I can't see as many. You've clearly eaten them very quickly. Uh, well, you know, it's, it's the mid-afternoon, you might have a bit of a lull, you need some sugar, I get that. So, uh, but that's, you still experience that product, still proves the point. So the Mars bar, you can see it and touch it and feel it. It's got packaging, it's got some words on the back. I can go, hey, sell that. And someone will be like, yep, got it. If you said to me, hey, uh, what is a Mars bar? I'll be able to go, hey, look, that, that's a Mars bar there. And you'll be like, okay, I pretty much get the idea. So, uh, however, an API, it doesn't look like anything. I can't show it to anyone. I can't say, hey, this is the API, look. Boop, boop, open up the box, pull, up, pull the API out. It's a, it's a technical concept. It exists as a relationship between two computer systems. It does exist. It does things. We benefit from it. But, it, but uh, it's not a thing that we can see it. So non-technical people, it's a very difficult concept to grasp. This is a thing that ethereally, look, you're, you can't use it. And um, you can't see it, and I can't show it to you. But trust me, it exists. It's over there, paying the bills for us. And they're like, all right. And technical people go to the other extreme. They see it as, well, this is a technical concept. It's how this computer system over here communicates with this computer system over here. Now, that's not incorrect. That is exactly what's happening. But it's not, that's not talking about as a product. That's not why our customers are coming to us. The customers aren't coming to us and going, hey, can you give me something that connects this computer system over here or this computer system over there? They're solving, looking for a product that solves their problem. If I was to say to the Mars, to, with this Mars bar, um, so oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. So, so, so that's that's why it's a tri it's a tricky thing when we when someone when we talk about our API and the first things we mention is that it's RESTful and it's uh, it uses dot, it's great with .NET or it's great with uh, Java or Scala or whatever, whatever the current, whatever the, what the uh, program language du jour is, then that's not that useful because what you're talking about there is not what you can do with it. You're talking about, you're talking about why, like or how rather, you're talking about how. The important thing is you have to do talk about what you can do with it and why, not how it works. If I was to go to this, if you asked me, hey, what's that Mars bar? And I was to say, oh, Mars bars. What a Mars bar is, it's uh, some, uh, it basically, it's a collection of glucose molecules, and your body is sort of breaks those down. The, blood, the glucose enters your bloodstream, and it tricks your pancreas into re 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 releasing uh, hormones that make you feel good. And you're like, oh, well, I'm all right actually. I don't think I'll, I don't think I'll bother with that. But you know, they say, oh, you eat it, it makes uh, cure fondant makes your heart melt. It makes you feel good. You eat it, tastes nice, feel, makes you feel good, uh, make, helps you work, rest, and play. You're talking about what you can do with it. You can eat it, and it'll make you feel good. And why? It's going to make you feel good and taste nice. You don't talk about 
how, although in the case of an API, that does enter into, into the discussion. So this is an example of where a Sendex has fallen over, and pretty much any company that sells an API falls into this trap of talking about the how. So this is a uh, document from Ascendex's uh, one of a uh, conference that, or a, a, a trade show that Ascendex was at. Not for technical people, incidentally. And you can see here, um, the resolution is a little bit low, but here's a picture of some code. And we talk about straight away. We're talking about .NET, and PHP, and Ruby, and Java, and Perl, and Delphi. Whoa. Well, it's a it's an HTTP API. Any programming language in the world can use this API, but we're not talking about what you can do with it and why. We're talking about how you integrate with it. And then we're showing a picture of some code. So if you're a, if you're a non-technical person who's going to this event, which in the case of the event where this was, that's, that's accurate, then you're going to come and you're going to go, ah, what is that? What's that there? That looks complicated. Code. Now, I don't know, what, I don't know how to use that code, but I know that I paid for some code and it was expensive. And that looks complicated, and complicated means expensive. Ugh. So that's one of my bugbears is code in marketing. You can see the marketing department, you can see why they did that. They're like, we need some imagery for this leaflet. We'll put some code on there, it'll look like the matrix. It'll be flying around, it looks really cool. And because it does not a thing that exists, you can't see it. So that code looks like, well, that, that f solved that problem. But actually, if you're a non-technical person, it just looks complicated, and if you're a technical person, you can't use that as an example. You probably aren't. That's, that's a PHP example. It's only two lines long, but it makes it look really complicated when you compress it into a tiny space. It bumps it down like that. And uh, so, so if you're non-technical, it's not that useful to you either. It doesn't look that pretty. And all of this, all you're saying, when, you, when you're saying it's got .NET examples and PHP and Ruby and Java, and Perl and Delphi, you're just all you're really saying is it's easy to use. And you might as well just say that. Just say it's easy to use. However, this is this is our newer, we've we've thought about this a lot. This is our API uh, website. <laughs> I've got an example here. Um, uh, so on this website, uh, on our API site now we, we talk about first of all we show our our glamorous model, Jose, who is one of our account managers in Barcelona. Looking at his phone, he's receiving a text. That's what, what, that is the result of using the service. And then we show you the result of using the service. We've got a little animation that plays. It shows a message. I've scrolled down too far. So it like, shows you using your app. You click a button. It sends the text message. And then the most important part of, uh, part of all, the thing pops up. Text message arrives. You're showing people what your, the problem you're solving, what you're doing, with what they can do with your API and why, rather than just talking about how it works. And then we talk about features and stuff like that and customer testimonials. But we're, at no point we're we saying it's restful, not yet. That's, that doesn't enter into the discussion just yet. Let's get back to our presentation. OK. Okay, so when you talk about your API, talk about these things first. Talk about what it does. Why am I, as a customer, coming to use your API? Why do I care? How, can my, how, how your customers can benefit? What is the reason I would use it? Well, the reason you would use it is because you can send lots of messages to your customers in, at a very low cost. It scales, that sort of thing. So you talk about what the benefit is. Why do I care? And then how easy it is to use. So you don't need to say it's RESTful. You don't need to say it's .NET. It's great with .NET. It's just easy to use. That's all the developer cares about. They're thinking like, is this going to be a pain in the ass? I've been asked to send, make it send text messages. I don't want this to be a hassle. So you talk about how, how it's easy to use. You talk about these things later. You're not saying you don't talk about it. But at the point where you're talking about how it works, how it does what it does, they've already made the purchase decision. They've already, they're already convinced, I'm going to have a go. How do I do that? OK, then later on, you can talk about how it does what it does. And this is where you can put the customer in touch with someone who's a bit more technical who could help them, or even better, provide a really great developer site so they can just find out for themselves. The developers don't want to talk to anyone. Just show me the goddamn code. So how you integrate with it, how RESTful it is, how well it works with Elk Stacks and Hadoop clusters and C Sharp and Java Node, Scala, PHP, Ruby, all of that stuff. You talk about that stuff later. Start with how it, uh, what it does and how customers can benefit from it. 
So this is the final part. Like, that's fine to tell you guys that. You, you, you get it. You probably knew a lot of this stuff already. You're, uh, you know, you're on the inside with the APIs. But how do you get your company on board? Many of whom maybe they don't know about. Uh, they don't know about APIs, or they're intimidated by talking about your API. How do you get everybody on board with this idea that we need to treat the API as a product and talk about its benefits? So what we tried at Ascendex, training everybody in the whole company got API, gets API training. Everybody who joins the company gets API training. Sales and support, every, every single person in your company should be able to say, this is what we do. This is why. This is why this company cares about it. If someone's at, they're out to dinner with someone and someone asks, hey, what do you lot do at your company? And they should be able to say, well, we do this. We send text messages. We book apartments for people. We, you know, uh, we make, we organize hotels. That sort of thing. Whatever it is your company does, they should be able to say it. And uh, you see, that's this is a real session. And these are these are a mixture of that. George here, he's a developer. He's one of our newer developers. And um, but we've got non-technical people, finance support, and uh, marketing in that session. So so. Um, so we, everybody goes through that basic training about what it does and why. And that establishes the grounding. And also the sales team and the support team, they get more training, they get more detailed training. But, uh, so you make sure everybody can understand what your product is, who uses it, so what, what kind of customers are interested in using it, how they benefit from it. It's the same stuff, really, but just look at giving them examples. How it performs, what do they like about it, what's good for them, what, what, what's, what's in, of interest to them. And how we talk about it, what language what we, we use. Because the important thing is, if you, when you change how you talk about the API in, as a company, you'll change how the company thinks about it. So you won't have salespeople who like get a call and they're like, oh, I want to ask about the API. And the sales guy's like, oh, he's going to ask a load of oh, technical questions and stuff like that. And they get nervous. They know, they know what to talk about because they know what you're going to ask about. You're going to ask about, is it going to solve this problem? Is it going to solve that problem? So you have to change how you talk about it, change how you think about it. And that's also quite useful internally, because if your technical teams are talking about your API in those terms, and your support teams, and your sales teams, and your marketing teams, anyone else in your organization that's dealing with that product, then you, they can all communicate together on the same level. They're all working together on the same product. So it helps, helps internally as well as reaching out externally. OK, so what we've covered today is a brief introduction. Uh, your API is a product, and why that matters and how you go about treating your API as a product, changing how you talk about it, what you talk about first and what you talk about later, and how you get everybody on board. We did it with training. We haven't totally solved the problem. It's an ongoing thing, but uh, that was a good start for us. And I'm just going to any, any um, questions? This first applause for you. Thank you. Thank you. Right on time. <laughs> So, some question about API as a product. This gentleman here. Don't be shy. Oh, no. we have a courageous man. Uh, hello. Um, just before we said that uh, the products were too complicated and that we have to split into uh, many different smaller parts that we call API. And now we are saying uh, this API are a product. Isn't there a contradiction or something? Well, no. I mean, it doesn't. You, you split your product, your, your API up, so that you can talk about, uh, so you can uh, make it easier to manage and easier to use. But fundamentally, the problem people are solving with your API hasn't changed. Like it's still the same. So as, as a product, it's it, it's not changed in terms of its intent. It's only changed in terms of how one would go about using it. Right. So like, it's okay to split your product to you change how your product works because you're not fundamentally changing the reason that people use it. So that's okay because talking about your API as a product means talking about the benefit of using that product rather than talking about the specifics of how it is used. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, sure. <laughs> does it answer the question though, I suppose? Sure, sure. But we are going back and forth saying this is a product, this is API. And but the, are See? you selling the API? Are people paying to use the API? Yeah. So, so, so in order to like re, uh, sell that product to your to your consumers, 
the point is you, you don't, you don't it, it's not really the point about how exactly you go about using it as much as it is about why you would use it. Like, okay, I, you've got an API. Why do I want to use it? Why do I care? Does it solve my problem? Does it, how does my organization benefit? Is it easy to use? They're the questions I've got. I'm not pro I'm, at this point, I'm not really asking about is it split into lots of different, different sections. I'll worry about that later. We have time for one more question. I have, I have one question for you. It's about um, so some um, product manager, API product manager, made a, a great blog post about uh, the difference between a service and a product and yeah. talking about APIs. And he said that he took the example of Uber. So Uber, so the, the cab service, you have to ask a cab in the street and maybe you will find one, maybe it will not go in the direction where you are. So it's not reliable. It's a service, you, you will pay it. You, you don't own the car, you don't own the driver license. You, you, you pay it as a service, yeah. uh, but you own nothing. A product, like an iPhone, you buy it. Yeah. After, you own it. You pay it, you own it, you can break it. It's your responsibility, it's not a service anymore. Yeah. And he said an API is a service because you rely on someone, yeah. but you have to sell it as a product. Exactly. Yeah. So it has to be reliable. It's like Uber now, you know you will have a driver. You know everything. You, you don't know what's behind, but you know that the, the application and the interface is reliable. You will have the driver, you will have your ride, and you're pretty sure of that. This is a product. It's yeah. not a service anymore. Is it the way you wanted to talk about API as a product? Well, I suppose, there's a, I suppose we're talking about product in slightly different... So I try and avoid the word service in this discussion because actually service has lots of connotations in the technical world, like software as a service or service-oriented arch architectures and things like that. Services as in Windows services that are running and things like that. I want to try and get away from that, that yeah. word. But if we're talking about products and services uh, side by side, when I, when I say we need to treat it as a product, that, I suppose that means in, that's in how we communicate it. So product is a sort of collective term for uh, commercial saleable entities. Rather than, um, and I think I think it, you're right. It is a it is a service that we talk about as a product, and that's right. I suppose I just uh, I want to use the word product. I, I try and try and use that word because it loads it with. So it's not a product as a service. It's a service as a product. <laughs> yeah, that's that's. I like yeah, that. yeah. I'll, I'll keep we can that. close on that. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you, Andrew. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you.